Hey, boys and girls. This is Miss Jenny from the Old Stone Church in Rockton, Illinois. Um, I was just looking here because I'm making a cake. And, um, well, I measured out the baking powder and the baking soda, but now I can't tell which one is which. And I'm a little confused. Huh. Well, the problem is that if we put the wrong one in the cake, it will do the opposite of what I want it to do. So one will make the cake rise and one will make the cake fall. So I have to figure out which is which here in my, in my measuring cups and they're both the same. So, huh, here's what I think. I think we need to transform one of these because one of them will transform in this vinegar here. It will have a reaction, we call it, and the other one won't do anything at all. So I have no idea which one is which, but we're about to find out. The baking soda should transform this vinegar, but the baking powder will not. So let's see, is this the right one? Can you hear it? There it goes, there it goes. It's transforming. Do you see all the bubbles? Uh-oh. Yep. That's the one. I hope it doesn't overflow. I think it might. Is it going to overflow? Can you hear that? That's the baking soda, so that's not the one I want in my cake. It's kind of interesting, don't you think? At church this week, we're going to be talking about the transfiguration. And that's kind of a big word, but it comes from the word to transform. And what happened one time when Jesus was with his disciples is that he took them all up to the top of a mountain and there he was transfigured before them. Now, before I explain to you what that means, let me explain to you that before Jesus came, his followers were expecting him because the prophets of long ago had said that he was coming and they had told people to watch for signs that Jesus the Messiah was actually there. And so people sort of thought that he was the Messiah, that Jesus was the Messiah because he was performing miracles and he was going around preaching the good news and he was doing lots of things that seemed to say that he was the Messiah. But during that time, there were also evil people who would try to make people think they were the Messiah because they wanted people to worship them. And so they would perform magic tricks and they would go around doing good deeds. And so people were a little bit puzzled sometimes because they were like, is this real? Is he really the son of God or is this all a trick? Now, his disciples were more convinced than anybody else because, of course, they didn't have telephones or radios or TVs back then. And his disciples were always with him. So they didn't just hear about these things. They saw these things for themselves. And they were pretty sure he was the Messiah. But when he was transfigured at the top of the mountain, what happened was God, Jesus' father, came in a cloud over the top of him and he spoke out of the cloud. And he said... This is my son, listen to him. And then the Bible says that Jesus' face lit up, that it radiated sunlight. Now, let me ask you a question that's a little bit like the transfiguration, but not really, okay? Now, you guys and me, we have moms and dads, right? And sometimes, well, most of us don't remember when we actually got our mom or dad, right? They've always been there. So we have to just take their word for it that they're our mom and or our dad. So let's say this, let's say that your mom comes to you and says, I want you to clean your room. Or your dad comes to you and he says, you really need to mow the lawn, the grass is long. Now, what if you looked at your mom or your dad and you said, well, how do I really know that you're my mom? I mean, 
I wasn't, I don't remember the day you became my mom or the day you became my dad. I don't remember. So how do I know that it really happened? Just because you say you're my mom or my dad, are you really? And what if then a cloud appeared over your mom or dad's head and a voice came out of the cloud and said, listen to your mom or listen to your dad. And then all of a sudden your mom or dad's face got really bright and like sunlight started pouring out of it. Would you make sure to mow your lawn or clean your room? I think you probably would. I think you would be like kind of scared of your mom and dad. But guess what? That doesn't happen, does it? And I'm willing to bet that you still clean your room or you still mow your lawn, right? Why? Because you believe that your mom is your mom. You believe your mom or your dad is your dad, even though you haven't seen it with your own eyes. Now, what Jesus said in the word of God, he said to his disciples, you're blessed because you've seen, you have the proof. God came in a cloud and he said who I am, right? But more blessed are those who see, who have not seen, but still believe, right? So the disciples saw Jesus transform before their very eyes and they believed, okay? But Jesus says that when we believe in who he is and follow him, even though we haven't yet seen with our own eyes, we see the evidence all around us, sort of like the evidence that this was baking soda, right? So I can put it in the cake. There's evidence all around us. Now, all I have to do is put the baking powder in the cake and believe that it will rise because it will, right? We believe in Jesus because of the world around us, because of the mom and dad that he's given us to take care of us, to love us, and we trust our parents, even though we don't necessarily remember the day they showed up and became our mom and or our dad, right? It's pretty cool when you think about it that there's lots of things in life you have to have faith for, right? While your mom and your dad, they have to have faith that when they get in their car, it's going to start so they can go to work. Usually that works, but not always, right? We have faith in a lot of things. We have faith that the food we eat is going to nourish our bodies, that the water we drink is going to quench our thirst, and we live our lives living out that faith. Now, Jesus said also in the first chapter of Romans that God has given us everything all around us to show us who he is. From the grass and the water and the sunlight and the rain to the people he's put in your life, even to your very own body, that I can scratch my head, that I can blink my eyes, that I can breathe. They're all evidence of Jesus and a God who loves us and that the words he has said in his word are true. So, I think that it's very important when we read about the transfiguration that we understand that Jesus, when he was here, he did what was necessary to make sure his disciples were absolutely certain that he was the son of God. And nothing has changed. God gives us proof all around us of who he is and why he desires for us to follow him. And you know what's even better? Is that if you are still having trouble having faith, Jesus has said that if you ask him for the wisdom to believe, that he will show you himself. He said that everybody who looks for him finds him. And everybody who knocks at his door of heaven, he opens the door for them. So even if all the things you say around, see around you, even if that is not enough for you, you can ask God and he will prove himself to you. You know, I have four children. And of the four, I have three that have blonde hair and blue eyes. And I have one that has brown hair and brown eyes, okay? And he has two brothers who like to tease him because when he was born, I was asleep. So I don't remember him being born. I woke up and my big belly was gone and my son was in my arms. So his brothers tease him all the time and they tell him that maybe I'm not his mom. And then maybe he was adopted because mom doesn't even remember when you were born and dad wasn't in the operating room. So you might not actually be mom's son. But you know what? He looks at me and he says, I look just like my mom. You guys stop teasing me. Mom remembers being in the hospital with me. Mom remembers when I was in her belly. And he has the faith because of the evidence to believe that he is my son and I am his mom. So I want you guys to put your trust in the Lord. And if you're still not convinced, 
you can ask him and he will prove himself to you. He has promised you that if you look for the evidence, you will find it. So I want to sing you a song about how powerful and amazing God is and about the things he's put around us. It goes like this. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his. The valleys are his, the skies are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. And finally today we're going to sing the blessing song together because I love it and I want to sing a blessing over you. So you can sing this song over me too if you'd like and hold out your hands because this is how we offer a blessing to one another, okay? Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. And I can see in you the glory of my King. And I love you with the love. Yes, I love you with the love. I love you with the love of the Lord. Hope to see all of you at the Old Stone Church in Rockton, Illinois. On Sunday morning at 9 a.m., this is Miss Jenny signing off. Have a great week, everybody.